Okay, Fran Hauser. Thank you so much for being here. I feel like I've known you for a long time and this is the first time we're getting to you know, sit down and dive into what you do. You are an author, you're a startup investor, you're an advisor, and you're an advocate for gender parity and for win women in business. So all the things that we believe in here at The Second Shift, you have made a career advocating for. And um, this is your second book. That's why you're here today, which is called Embrace the Work, Love Your Career, which I think is, yeah, there it is. There's the cover. It's so cute. First of all, it's so Thank well you. done. It's Thank really you. like such a fun way to engage in your career. And I think that's what sets it apart. It's really positive as these things go. Um, and there's a lot in it, right? You've got worksheets, you've got um, coloring book sections, there's mindfulness and intention setting. So I just wanna know from you, what, what inspired you to write this book after you know you already wrote your first book and how did you get the, the energy, enthusiasm and creativity to do this again? I know, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Jenny. I'm just such a big fan of yours and, and everything that, that you're building um, at the second shift. So thank you for having me. Um, I know you're right about finding the energy because the myth of the nice girl came out in 2018. Um, so it took me a few years to find the energy to do it, and to do a second that was COVID. So COVID and honestly, COVID was a big part of my inspiration for writing this book because, you know, it was really in the middle of the pandemic when I was reading all the articles about the millions of women that have left the workforce and the millions more that are rethinking their career path and their purpose. And um, it was really kind of in that moment where I was like, you know, I want to, I want to do something. I think this is like the right time for my next book, but I wanted it to be different. I didn't want it to be just your like 60,000 word narrative you know, career advice book. I wanted it to be more engaging um, and more interactive and lighter because we're all carrying so much right now. I love so that. I'm really glad that you picked up on that, like just how positive it is and how there's more of like a holistic approach. Even though it's about your career, there's still mindfulness that's integrated in and like little pause and reflect and coloring break sections. Um, so I really wanted it to feel to feel lighter, to feel beautiful, to be fun, joyful. Um, so it, it and actually was a lot of fun to work on. It was a very different kind of product because it wasn't just writing. It was also the designing and the layout and the user interface, you know, really had to think through all of that. I just got a note to change the view that I had it on wrong. See, I'm not good at this, but now thank you for the note because now I fixed it. So I appreciate Yay. that. So all the people- Those in. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's get down to it because there's like real practical advice. And I think right now, as you said, people are really struggling with ambition. People are struggling with, uh, you know, uh, transitional moments where there seems to be so much opportunity, but then sometimes it doesn't really actually feel like that, or you don't want the opportunity that comes your way. You're not sure if you want to continue doing what you've been doing. These are the kinds of things I'm hearing a lot from the women in our network who are just feel like really burnt out. And sometimes when you're feeling burnt out, none of the options feel good. It's like being too hungry and being in the supermarket where you're, yeah. <laughs> I'm too hungry. I can't make a decision. Right. I don't know what I want to eat. So I just will eat like four almonds and call it a night, you know, or cheese and crackers. So when we're in this place, how do you get yourself even in the space to open up this book and and want to try to figure it out. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I I like to use the analogy. It's funny that you brought up food because I like to use the analogy of a food cleanse. You know, like when we set aside five days or seven days or whatever it is to go through a cleanse, um, this is a very similar process. It's really giving yourself the time and it's such a gift. But if you give yourself, right, there's six sections in this book. If you say over six days, you're going to spend a couple of hours each day on each section um, and really go through the reflective work. And there's a lot of kind of deep, like soul searching and analysis. Um, it's such a gift to yourself because I don't feel like we do that often enough. You know, we get into this weird 
like autopilot mode, you know, or we're feeling stuck and we don't know how to get unstuck. Um, so I think the book is all about action. And it's I love really that. And positivity, positive, and like positive, you know, inside, positive, outside, the yeah. way that you embrace and look at the future. So starting off, there's six sections, as you said. Yeah. What are the six sections? Yeah. So the six sections are, um, the first one is called fall in love with your career. So this is really all about tapping into um, what is it about your current role or maybe your most recent role, if you're in transition, um, what is it that's really like working for you? Because it's very easy to focus on what's not working and to focus on the negative, but there's like one exercise in this section that I love, which is to look back at your calendar for the last month or two and pick out the meetings or the experiences or the events that put a smile on your face and do the work to figure out like, what was it about that experience that was so fulfilling? You know, was it the type of problem that I was solving? Was it the people that I was working with? Was it the skill sets that I was using? to really try and figure out like what parts of your job do you like? And is there a way that you can do more of that either in your current role or maybe as a side hustle? But again, starting from a place of positivity and, and really like trying to, to lean into that. So there are a bunch of exercises in that first section that, that are about kind of having you think through like what you love, what, what's the work that you dread, you know, what's not, what's not working for you. So it's, all of that. Then section two is where you get into action and you create a career action plan. And this is where you really get into goals that are not just about your current job, but about your career in its entirety. So like really thinking about your network, thinking about your personal brand, thinking about your skills, like, um, and where do you want to invest time to really level up in those areas? Um, the third section is really important because it's about creating time and space. You can have this career action plan and these goals, but if you don't have the bandwidth to actually focus on them. So I love this section. I feel like it could be its own book because it's all about setting boundaries and, and really being relentless, you know, about protecting your time. Um, and the, the other three really quick, and then we can go deeper if you want. Section four is know your value, which is all about confidence. Section five is building your dream team. And section six is reflecting and reset, resetting. So that's really like the mindfulness piece. Okay, let's go into, I have questions in each section yeah. because I think each one is so valuable. And, and then and the nuggets of wisdom, and then you have exercises in each section, you have a mindfulness piece to each section. So, uh, but in particular, I wanna start with boundary setting. Yeah. What, you know, that can mean so many things to so many different people. How do you mean it in this way when it comes to work? Yeah. So I it's very hard for people. I mean, I know this is something that's very hard for me and I've been focused on, on this in, in many different areas of life. Yep. And it's still hard for me. You know, there are times where I feel like I'm doing it really well. And then there are times where I feel like I'm, you know, regressing. <laughs> And in this um, moment in time, I think, especially for working parents or not even so much where like work becomes like in your house all the time or yeah. work is at night and work is during the morning because you want the flexibility of having a remote schedule and that's the benefit of it. But then the, there's no boundaries. This is something yeah. I hear all the time all from the people time. who are like, it's all the great. I own my own schedule, but I always work and there's no boundaries. Yeah. And I've, I've really, first of all, I can really relate to that. Um, and really empathize with that. And I've had to be like relentless about with my calendar about blocking out time. Like even as an example, when the kids get home from school, you know, 3.30, by 3.30, they're both home. And what I was finding was that I still was working between like 3.30 and like say six, I still had, and it, it, it just wasn't working because they need help with homework they need to get places. And so I really, I decided this a while ago that I am just going to keep that time open for them because otherwise I get way too stressed, you know, where I feel like I'm not do I'm not doing it. 
I'm not committing I'm not too much at the same time you know so it's like just chunking out or even like I get up 20 minutes I wake up 20 minutes before they do because I need that 20 minutes to just set the tone for the day and to really connect with myself and that could either mean having a cup of coffee or like stretching or like but just doing something to just be with myself in a quiet home before the craziness begins <laughs> you know except for now my younger son has gotten starts getting up at the same time and i'm like you need to no. stop getting up at the same time the point is you're still in bed and i have this time if you're here it ruins my whole time it ruins it when they were little i used to stay up late and that was like my sec time when they went to bed earlier and now they own it's like you have they to clean in the morning yeah and now i'm finding i have to get to bed earlier you know i have to get to bed earlier so that i can get up earlier I mean, even when I was writing this book, I was getting up at 5.30 because I knew I had to, I needed a couple of hours first thing in the morning to write before they got up. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it, it, is, it is really tricky. But the other thing I'll say is that I've done, I've done a bunch of research into why women have such a hard time saying no and, and why we, we have, why we take it all on. And what I found is that it's really complicated. There are a lot of different reasons from people pleasing to FOMO, to being addicted to being busy. I mean, there were like 15 different reasons. And I think it's really important to know what your why is. Like if, you, if you're taking it all on and you're having a hard time saying no, and it's always that knee jerk reaction of, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can help. Why? Why is that? Because checking in with yourself, I'll tell you, for me, it's people pleasing. And when I get that request in my inbox and I automatically go to like, oh, I should say yes. I have to take a step back and think about like, is this strategic? Is it aligned with my priorities? Or is it just something that I think is going to bring me joy and I want to do? But if I'm just saying yes, because I feel bad saying no, you know, I can't do that. And, and I've, I've really like, it's, this is a muscle that I've built over time. Like even down to the way that I say, no, it's, it's a couple of lines. It starts with, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for the invitation. You don't start with, I'm sorry. You know, it's like, thank you. And I'm heads down working on whatever it is, you know, that I'm working on. Um, so I won't be able to participate and I wish you the best with it. And that's it. I'm not writing three paragraphs to justify why I can't do something. So like the saying no is really important in terms of protecting your time, because I know that's my Achilles heel. So it's something I really need to work on. That's a great, that's great advice. Okay. And then you're setting goals. You call it RBG, not yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Totally a nod to, to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You know, shout out to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. All right, let's give her a little shout out. I mean, so amazing, incredible woman. Um, yes, the reason why I call them RBG, so they, it stands for really big goals. And the idea is that, you know, it's very easy to get mired in your day-to-day to-do list, you know, and the minutia and everything that needs to get done. And by the way, like there's stuff, yeah, it just has to get done. You know, we all have that. But it's also really important to take a step back and think about what, like, where can you spend your time where it's really going to move the needle, whether it's for your job, your career, your family, your health, whatever those things are for you. And like, honestly, for me, it's usually like one or two things in each of those areas where I want to make sure that I'm spending like 70 to 80% of my time. Um, in, is it in always areas. goal focused and oriented when you're putting the 70 or 80%? Like, is there, are you just like, okay, family and kids, or does it have to be like family doing this thing? Yeah, it's usually it's like, it's, it's interesting. So the way that I do it is I have this, this four square um, and it's the four, the four quadrants are me, family, career, and world. And I've been doing this for like, I don't know, over 10 years now at this point. But in each of those areas, I have a couple of things. So like, or sometimes it's even just one. Like I'll tell you right now for family, my big focus is fun. I just want to do things that are fun because the pandemic was really hard, you know, and it was really hard on the kids. So I want to create experiences for them that are really fun and, and memorable, like things that they're going to remember. And that's, that is my focus right now, you know, for my family, you know, for my career, it's, it's different. It's for my career. It's like, 
this book, right? Like it's promoting this book. And as an angel investor, I have over 30 companies in my portfolio that I've invested in, but there are two companies right now that like really need my help. And like, those are the two that I'm focusing on. So it's like, and then everything else kind of goes on a to don't list for a while, not for forever, but for a while. I like that. It's a to don't. I literally have a to don't list of things that I'm not focusing on. And it's really important to do that because like even with business, you know, I've done so much business strategy over the years. And what I found is that when you're developing strategy, it's just as important to know what you're not going to work on as it is to know what you are, right? Like I remember when we launched people.com, we were so focused on like, wait, is this, is this going to be celebrities and real people just like the print product? Or should we just focus on celebrities? And we decided we were just going to focus on celebrities because women were coming to the website as a guilty pleasure. They wanted entertainment and the real people stuff we were just going to you know, leave in the magazine. But do you know how clarifying it was even just to know that? Because as story ideas came to us, as feature ideas came, we were very clear on what we were going to cover and not cover. So I, I like applying that, you know, to, to my own life um, and really being clear about where I'm spending my time and where I'm not. I was going to say this, this was going to come up in another question I had about like, just checking in to make sure that your to-do list aligns with your intention. Cause like I, I, my to-do list could be multi pages long. Um, and sometimes it's things that then if you don't do the things on your to-do list, you start to feel bad about badly about yourself because you didn't get to the to-do list where maybe like what you say, it wasn't, it's not purposeful to be, it doesn't need to be there. And I, I I agree in terms of reviewing your to-do list against your intentions, your priorities, your goals, whatever you want to call them. I mean, every weekend I'm looking at my to-do list and I'm looking at my calendar for the upcoming week because that's where I'm actually spending my time, right? It's the calendar and the to-do list. And I'm looking for alignment with my RBGs, you know, and I'm looking and if, and if there is an alignment, then something's got to change. And I will make changes to my calendar, literally like the weekend before. Um, I might shorten meetings, I might delegate them, I might just push them out. Um, I think it's, it's really important to, to be intentional. I started yeah. doing this. And I, I, it's not something I used to do very well. I used to say yes to a lot more professionally and personally. And I found now not feeling guilty about just saying like, this isn't going to work right now. Yeah. I just can't make this thing happen right now. Like it's yeah, right now. too many things. Sorry. Yeah, right. Not even sorry. Just uh, we'll, we'll talk in July. We'll talk in July. And that's the thing too, that I think Jenny's really important is it's not no for forever. Because that makes people feel like uncomfortable. Like, oh my gosh, if I'm saying no, like it means that it maybe in a few months, it might be the right time, right? But it's it's no for now. Yeah. And and it's empowering to do and say that. Um, And then I want to talk about like the know your value part Mm -hmm. of confidence piece, the the piece of like what you were talking about perfectionism. What what do you think in your research or in your own life, what, what holds people back from making the, you know, people often have the to-do list and they often have the real big goal and they have all of these things that they want, but then acting on it, making really happen for themselves, um, feeling that they can do it. It, It's like a gap in in there that, that there's a gap. Yeah. Activate on the, one of the most interesting pieces of research that I came across when it it comes to confidence is, um, I don't know if you've, if you've heard of this, this piece of research, it was done by Hewlett Packard. Um, and basically what they found was that men will apply for a role if they have 60% of the qualifications in the job description, whereas women feel like they need to have a hundred percent of the qualifications. And I know like, this is something that I've struggled with over the years, you know, I'll, I'll never forget when I was at AOL and this job opened up at Time Inc that I was so excited about. It was basically like a, a liaison between AOL and Time Inc, both divisions of Time Warner to come up with new products and new business opportunities. 
And when I saw the job description, I was so focused on the fact that I didn't have magazine publishing experience. That's all that I could focus on. And I felt like I just, I wasn't qualified. And it took a male colleague of mine to say, Fran, you're perfect for this job. Like you're creative, you have digital, you don't have print, but you have digital media experience. And you're so good at bringing people together and making connections, like connecting the dots. You have to go for it. And I have to tell you, like, I, I did go for it. I got the job. I ended up working at Time Inc. for 10 years you know, elevated up to president of digital. I was running a big division of the company. And I literally was not going to go for that job because I was so focused on what I didn't have instead of focusing on the qualifications that I that I did have. Um, so I just think it's like that moment was such a wake-up call for me, you know, because that's how it's sort of like the way that our brains are wired. <laughs> and we have to like remind ourselves, like we literally have to like focus on but okay, but what do I have? You know, what are the qualities that I do have where I can do a really great job or I, or this is like a perfect opportunity for me and I, and I should go for it. But isn't it funny how the external validation of something that you might've already known made you go for it instead of what you could write down the list and know inherently about yourself. But then you still, if it's like, you don't believe it if it's you. It. I know. I, I have to tell you, one of the things that's really been helpful to me over the years, speaking of writing things down, is I started keeping um, a journal. Like any time that I did something where I created real value um, at work, like I would just write it down. Or if somebody sent me a positive email, like I'd print it out and you know copy and paste it into this journal. Um, and for me, like when I'm feeling that that lack of confidence, that imposter syndrome, whatever it is, I literally go back and I look at my journal. Like I just flip through the pages and it's just a reminder to me of what I'm capable of. You know, it's a reminder of like, you're capable of great things. You know, you're capable of doing great work. And it's like, I literally have to sometimes see it in writing, you know, see it in writing. Um, to and everybody just, feels that way. Everybody feels that way, feels you know? Doesn't matter I, what who you are, what you are, what job you have. Yeah. And you, and you know what else I'll say too, is I had a coach once who helped me get through, I was very nervous about this talk um, that I was asked to do at Time Inc. We had a brand new CEO and we were doing like a quarterly management meeting. It was going to be hundreds of managers in the room. And I was one of like five people that were going to be speaking. And it was my first time speaking in front of this new CEO and I was so nervous. And I remember talking to my coach about it. And what she had me do was literally write down the process that I've used in the past to create a, a really successful talk, like write down the process that I used. And then she said to me, just use that same process. Like it's evidence-based confidence. Like you've used this process in the past. It worked for you. Do it again. It's repeatable. And there's something about that that also is like really helpful to me, just knowing like, okay, this is the process I used in the past. It's worked for me. I'm going to do it again, you know? So that's like another kind of just technique for yeah. you to think about, for everyone on the, on the webinar to think about. What is, um, look, I know it's, we're, we're hitting the half hour mark and I don't want to take too much of your time. I think this is, this has been really helpful. And the book is you know, a, a huge resource for people to be able to do this work on their own. Like I said, there's, you know, there's a lot of um, worksheets and, and all types of activities that you can do to, to, to make this come alive for yourself beyond just listening to us talk about it. But I'd love to know from you, the, the last thing, what's your smile? What is the smile file? Oh my gosh, that's, so the smile file is the name for that journal. That um, that I just mentioned to you. Yeah, that's what I thought. That that's the smile file, and there's a whole section in the book where you can write down um, where you could just start your journaling. Here it is, smile file. I love that. I love it. It's the optimism. It's the happiness piece smile of it. Fun. It's the part where you're like elevating your own spirit and reminding mm -hmm. yourself that you're awesome. And you know what else? You could do a digital smile file in your inbox. You can create a folder. And every time you get an email with positive feedback, just drag it into that folder. 
I love that. I have friends I love that do the that. mindfulness yeah. aspect of this book too. That that it, and how do you how did you come to to bringing that in? Because that's not something that you often see in career books. Yeah. Well, well my one of my very best friends in the world, Patricia Carpus, um, created a meditation app called Meditation Studio, um, which is an an incredible app. It's you know very short guided meditations. Um, it was a top ten app. On, in the Apple store. I mean, it's, she, you know, it's, it's just a great app and having her in my life, you know, like she's the one. Um, and by the way, and my other really good friend, Chrissy Carter, who's a yoga instructor, I feel like the two of them, they ground me, you know, they're the ones like, they're not like big, like business people. They're, they're just, they're so grounded and they're so connected and they've given me the best advice over the years. Um, I just love them so much. And I, I feel like that's that's been their gift to me is showing me how important it is to really be present the way that we respond um, to difficult situations. The, you know, there was one day that I was just like really worried about something and Chrissy said to me, um, Fran, just like imagine putting that worry in a box, like literally like putting it in a box and closing the box. And the box will be there when you need to get back to it. But for right now, just kind of leave it there, you know? And she'll say things like that to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, where it, it, it really, they've just, these little like techniques have made such a difference in my, in my life when it comes to being intentional um, and being mindful and being present. And, you know, if you don't have that intentionality, how do you go through your career? It goes back to like, okay, then you're just in autopilot mode and you're just going with the motions versus being really intentional and having that that clarity of really creating a career that, that you love and a career that works for you. On that note, I loved this. This was a great chat. I hope that people really got something out of it. I know I did. I think that this is a great way to think about your career, whether you're just trying to level up in what you're doing now, you're thinking about a transition, you're going back to work in all aspects, like doing the inner work, thinking it through, having intention, and then, you know, really activating between what you believe in yourself, what others believe in you and what you want to do. I love it. Thank thanks, you so thank much. You so much. Thank, you. Thank, you for thank you for being here. This was thank you. great. Thank, thank you for everyone. For everyone. Yeah. Bye. Take care, Thran. Thank you. Bye everybody.